Hey folks, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to run through an example that involves kinematics, the position, velocity, and acceleration of an object. So let's get started. Let's say that the position of a rocket is given by S of t equals 5 over 2 t squared minus 3 t plus 10. Just as a comment, I made this problem up. So this doesn't really follow the actual behavior of any rocket. This is just something for us to consider conceptually. If you were in a physics class or a more applied class, you'd probably have an example that modeled real life. I'm just using this as a conceptual example for us to try out these ideas. So again, we have the position here, and let's say that t is measured in seconds and s of t is measured in feet. I want us to find the position, the velocity, and the acceleration of the rocket after two seconds. So first, to find the position, I'm just going to plug in 2 for time into my original function. So I'm getting 5 halves times 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 10. I'm just going to go through and simplify that. So I have 5 halves times 4 minus 6 plus 10. That's 10 minus 6 plus 10. So I'm getting 16 feet. Then to find the velocity, I'm going to find the first derivative and plug 2, the time, into the first derivative. So to find the first derivative for the velocity, we just bring the power in front. The derivative of 3t is just 3, and the derivative of 10 is 0. So I'm left with 5t minus 3 as my derivative, which is the velocity of this rocket at any time t. We want to know the specific velocity at time is 2, 2 seconds. So I plug 2 in, I get 5 times 2 minus 3, that's 10 minus 3, so I'm getting 7 as my velocity. And specifically, the units of the velocity here are feet per second. Remember, you can think of the derivative of position with respect to time. The position is measured in feet, the time is measured in seconds, so my units here are feet per second, feet over seconds. So I found the position and the velocity at 2 seconds, I just need to find the acceleration after 2 seconds. So let's take the derivative again. I'm taking the derivative of 5t minus 3, and that is just 5. So the acceleration is constant here, and we have feet per second squared as our acceleration. Again, for units, here we're taking the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. The velocity is measured in feet per second, and the time is measured in seconds. So simplifying this, I have feet per second squared as my units. And just a note, I wrote it as s prime of t earlier. That's just the velocity at time t. We could relabel it that way if we wanted. Okay, so I have one other question I want us to talk about with this example. I want to ask, when does the rocket reach its maximum height? So let's talk about what's going on in this example in order to understand it. Let's say this rocket is being shot straight in the air. So it goes up and it stops at some point before it falls down to the earth. So at that top point, the velocity is going to be zero. On the way up, it has a positive velocity. On the way down, it has a negative velocity. But at the top, it has a velocity of zero. You can think positive velocity means it's getting further away from the starting point. Then when it's at that top point, it's not getting closer or further away, so the velocity is zero. And as it falls back down to the earth, the velocity is negative since it's approaching the original starting point. So for us to find when the rocket reaches its maximum height, we want to know when the velocity, or the derivative of the position, is equal to zero. So our derivative is 5t minus 3, and we're just going to set that equal to zero. So I move the 3 over to the other side, and I divide by 5, and I'm getting t equals 3 fifths. So at 3 fifths of a second, the rocket is reaching its maximum height. If you really wanted to be super sure that this was the maximum, you could use the first derivative test, where you plot this as a critical number and you choose a test point in each interval. But because I sort of understand the context of the problem here, it's not like this is the minimum height of the rocket, since the rocket's like starting on the ground and then going up in the air. So I know that this is the maximum just because of the situation, so I'm going to stop and say this is my final answer. Okay, well hopefully that gives you just the basics of how to solve some problems that involve position, velocity, and acceleration. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.